Praise the Lord Church. A couple announcements tonight. Uh, let's not forget about uh, Sunday morning, 11 a.m. The link's coming out. Let's get our homes ready a few minutes before church, 15 minutes, half hour before church. Let's put some music on, read our Bible, spend some time in prayer. Let's have our homes ready for church, ready for a move of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So Sunday morning, 11 a.m., coming through uh, YouTube Live. And uh, we're going to have church. Amen. Let's not forget we are in 30 days of prayer and fasting. And so we're asking the church to come together at this time through prayer and fasting. We're asking everybody to fast one meal a day and, um, and, and just let's draw closer to God. Amen. Let's not forget about our Bible reading. Amen. Um, let's read our Bibles through this year together. Amen. So let's take some time every day to read our Bibles. If you're a little bit behind, let's get caught up. Amen. Plenty of time in a year to get caught up and and make our way through the Bible this year, reading each word, understanding the story from start to finish, how things come together, what is God's great plan, amen. Uh, let's not forget about our CCC ministry. Um, we can invite people to these links, we can send them out, we can invite people into our church with us through these links, amen. So let's share our testimony, let's share these links, let's invite some people to church. We've been baptizing people, amen. And so we need to keep our CCC ministry going amen so let's keep that going uh youth don't forget about thursday night uh video at eight o'clock or eight thirty i'm sorry eight thirty thursday nights youth video with brother brad sister melissa and the youth team and also don't forget about the daily devotionals they're sending out uh children's zoom call is going on every tuesday night um that that might be changing to thursday night um brother bond will make sure to uh, let everybody know that's on that call um but uh make sure you're ch turning in for the zoom youth call or children's call amen um they're reading the bible together studying it together amen it's a great time that our kids are having uh wednesday nights we're going to continue to use links to send out the, the service wednesday nights and uh, let's not forget about corporate prayer on monday nights amen let's keep this let's keep this going amen we want to make sure we're praying with our families and also um let's not forget about the van we need to get fixed listen we're coming back into our building uh we're getting ready to do our prayer request and that's the first thing we're going to talk about our prayer request but we are getting ready to come back into our building we want to be able to bring people to our church we need to have these vans going and working well so if you could um send in some extra offering with your regular tithes and offerings and um let's not forget we're getting ready to uh you know it's the last week of january and as we enter into february let's not forget about our building fund amen let's not forget about our uh missions amen our global missions um th these things aren't stopping amen and we want to keep up with them. we want to be faithful with what god has given us um so some prayer requests we are getting ready to go back in our building we're looking at february 7th the first sunday in february um, being back in our building we will we'll split up we'll have uh a groups of four or more either upstairs in the sanctuary or down in the fellowship hall and three or less will be uh, the other place so we'll be upstairs and downstairs we'll split up according to size and we are going to be back in the house of god together as a church family amen and so february 7th let's pray about that let's keep ourselves safe let's avoid things that would be dangerous amen let's uh let, let's take care of each other by being careful and let's be praying about this amen um let's uh a great testimony for um, Sister Kim Rochelle. Um, they, the insurance approved her to move into an acute care, and so they are able to start moving her there. She is showing signs of getting better. Um, you know, it's slow. It's a long process back. It took a while to get to where she's at. And, you know, God's moving. He is doing what he does. Amen. And uh, we're just trusting in God for a complete healing here and restoration. Amen. Um, but the, the testimony is something that we've been praying about is her insurance has approved her to move into an acute care. And that's 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 a step forward. Amen. God is doing good things. we got to celebrate what God is doing. Let's not put any ifs, ands, or buts in there whenever we're praying to God. Let's just pray to God. Amen. And trust that he'll take care of it. Um, we're going to continue to remember Karen. Uh, this is Tara's friend. She has uh, cancer and in need of healing. We want to continue to remember Sister Dora. Uh, continue to remember Brother Jesus, Brother Diddy, uh, Sister Stephanie's mom. Uh, we want to remember uh, uh, Brother Dave Paisley's mom um, and uh, the family. Um, she is home, but we want to continue to remember her for a touch of God. Amen. Uh, Sister Jamie, um, her boss's fr um, friend, Meg Riggers. Um, let's continue to hold her up. Um, let's remember uh, Jim, this is a friend of uh, my sister Sue's, uh, has cancer in need of healing, amen. And uh, also Bill Maynard, Bill got baptized on, on Sunday, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, amen. The, the plan of God is working, people are being baptized, receiving the Holy Ghost, amen. And Bill Maynard was baptized in Jesus' name and um, just this past Sunday, but he is struggling with cancer, amen. Um, he's, he's doing better. Uh, doctors giving him good reports, but we're believing in the report of the Lord. We're going to continue to seek after God for a complete healing for Bill Maynard. Amen. So those are our prayer requests. If you have prayer requests, um, 
Listen, we can we can take them to the Lord right now. So if you would just stand with me, call out these prayer requests before God, and we're going to go before the throne room right now. Lord, we come before you, Jesus. Lord, reach down and touch these needs, God. Lord, we need you to move, God. Lord, we're praying, Lord God. Lord, we pray for our country, Lord God. Lord, our president, Lord God. Our Congress, Lord Jesus. Our governor, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Our our state house and senate, Lord God. Lord, touch our political leaders, Lord God, as they guide us and lead this country, Lord God. Lord, let your goodness be poured out upon them, Lord God. Let them seek after you, Jesus. God, we're lifting them up to you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we lift up right now, Lord. Lord, we're lifting up all these prayer requests for touch of the body, Lord God. Healings, Lord God. Lord, you are well able, Lord, and we're trusting in you, Jesus. God, we're coming before you, not wavering, not doubting, but trusting you for every one of these requests we've lifted up to you, Lord God. Lord, we're praying about our building, Lord God, getting back into it on February 7th, Lord God. Lord, give us wisdom, Lord God, individually and as a church, Lord God. Let us protect each other, Lord God. Keep us safe, Lord, as we help protect our brothers and sisters, Lord God, as we come back together, Lord God. Lord, let our health be stronger than COVID, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, you'd reach down, God, and just touch our country, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we're praying against the political unrest, Lord God. Lord, we're praying against the violence, Lord God. God, and we're seeking after you, God, to bring peace and calm. Your spirit, Lord God. Lord, we're looking for a mighty revival, Lord God. Lord, we pray you grow our church, save these cities, mature your people, bless and increase our finances, give us a bigger and better building, and Lord, send labors into the field, Lord. Lord, we want to participate in this end time harvest that you're bringing forth, Lord God. Lord, send the labors into the field. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, church. God bless you, church. Good to be with you tonight. Thank you, Brother Ron. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to bring to you Pastor Brother Anthony Mangan, pastor of the Pentecostals of Alexandria, Louisiana. His church hosts the conference that's called Because of the Times, which is B-O-T-T, BOT. And uh, because of COVID, they have had to cancel that conference. Uh, Brother Anthony has come down with COVID, and he's, in, he's two weeks in this, in this C-19 experience. So uh, a week ago, last Tuesday night, he decided to put together The Lord Spoke to Him, and he has a word that he is speaking and I listened to it, and I felt very strong that I need to share this with Apostolic Faith Church. He's going to read Psalms 24, 7 through 9. This talks about the King of glory. Lift up your heads. And it's imperative that we listen. Because I want you to be ministered to. I want you to be touched. Look, we have set the course of this church. I hope you have been participating in the fasting of one meal a day every week and you've been personally praying and reading your bible we've set the course of this church and we are we're in an incredible move of god incredible revival and i hope you're participating i hope you're in it church i hope each and every one of you are doing this as we do it together in unity it's important and i i just want you to know god's glory and his anointing is upon us I want you to be inspired. I want you to be touched by this. Let the Lord talk to you. Let God minister to you. Let the presence of God deal with you. And right now, as I bring to you Anthony Mangan, pastor of the Pentecostals of Alexandria, experience what God is going to do and it's doing right now in the kingdom of God and in Apostolic Faith Church. God bless you. We love you. want to say what a privilege it is to greet you great people that I have the privilege of pastoring POA and you wonderful people that join us every year at uh, BOTT. I thank you for your prayers, your love, and your concern uh, with this COVID issue that's been going on. Uh, I thank you for that. I thank POA for your love, uh, your food, and your cards. Uh, 2021 has opened up quite challenging for me, of course, not only with COVID, but the first Monday of, of January, I buried a cousin 
that I was close to Marla. And uh, after that, just a few days, um, COVID attacked my body. But like the other 99% that has had COVID, I'm still standing and I believe the greatest revival that the church has seen is getting ready to happen. When Paul was writing to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians 12 and 10, he said, therefore I take pleasures in infirmity and approaches and necessities and persecution in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. David said, when he was in some of his weakest moments, when he felt some of the strongest anointings. And I was thinking yesterday when God sort of laid upon my heart, or either I got righteous indignation, uh, to do this tonight, I realized that it was on that night, Monday night, where I greeted the general board, the speakers and the sponsors, and then tonight, uh, for 38 years, I have stood and opened some of the greatest meetings that the last day church has ever experienced. And tonight, I feel so honored to stand before you from here in my home, where I've been quarantined for the last 10 days. That's been quite unique, just Mickey and I, not being able to see family, grandchild, other things. It's, it's been a, a challenging few days. But tonight finds us uh, in a different world, uh, a different nation than we have ever been in. Uh, we're in this world pandemic, and I checked my phone, and as of noon today, 401,743 had died in America with corona, and over 2 million around the world. So when we begin to see all these things lining up, I mean, everyone has to sense. If we know anything about this book and the Word of God, we all have to sense that our time is short. And I pray tonight that God would speak through me a radical, life-changing, mind-changing, soul-changing, heart-rending message that would affect my life, my home, and POA, and your life, and your home, in your church. I want to boldly declare to you with all the strength that I have that above all the confusion, above all the fear and the anxiety and the uncertainty and the chaos of this divided world with our divided minds and divided hearts where in tomorrow we will be inaugurating a president for the United States of America, and he'll be sworn in. And nobody knows what's even going to happen in the streets of our city tomorrow. We've all been praying about that. But what I do know is there is coming a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind that will in my home, your home, our church, your church. It's going to be heard in our nation and it's going to be heard around the world. When I felt this yesterday afternoon, I called my pastor, Mike Williams, and I said, what do you think about this? He said, well, you have to consider your health. He said, if you do, please don't overdo it. But he gave me one line. He said, if you do it, make sure you continually repeat Psalm 24, 7 through 9. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty in battle. So lift up your head, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting door. For church, the King of glory is going to come in. So what I felt led to come tell you tonight is lift up your heads, lift up your spirits. The beginning of the greatest revival of all revivals that the church has ever seen is going to happen just before the night of all nights, where soon and very soon all New Testament believers and this Book of Acts church were going to leave this planet Earth to go be with the Lord. The hourglass, 
the Holy Ghost, Jesus' name, church dispensation is growing to a close. And this darkness that is covering the earth in gross darkness, the people. But let me remind you that my God said, when these things begin to happen, that my people that do know me, the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. There is happening and there is going to be a last day outpouring of the Holy Ghost that's going to change our lives and we're going to move from glory to glory and we shall do exploits. That same glory that was upon that tabernacle in the wilderness where it was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. That same God that fed those people out in the wilderness with manna falling down from heaven and a rock rolling around and followed them where they could get a drink of water any time they wanted. That same glory is on us. That same glory that filled that magnificent temple that some writer said was worth hundreds of millions and maybe a billion dollars. That same glory that filled Solomon's temple that majestic place, but it was filled so with the glory of the Lord that the ministers could not even minister. That same glory is upon us today. The same Holy Ghost that overshadowed that little teenage virgin girl, and she conceived and brought forth the Word, and the Word was made flesh, the incarnate Word, and we beheld His glory. That saying Jesus, that incarnate word in his mediatorial priestly prayer in John 17, 22, he prayed, and the glory that thou hast given me, I have given them that they may be one. The Lord said in John 17, the glory that I have, Anthony, is the glory you have. And the glory that he had is the glory that you have and your church and you as a family, you have that glory. I tell you, that same glory is upon us. <laughs> that same glory is around us. But most importantly, that same glory in, in us. So that we can make visible the characteristics of the Shekinah glory of Almighty God. It reminds me of when my father, uh, on a seven-day fast before he really had the breakthrough at POA in 1950-51, he was on a seven-day fast and he walked in a businessman's office in this city who was very influential. And that man fell back in his chair and he said, my God, man, I see a halo over your head. That same glory that was resting on my Father is the glory of God that's going to rest on we as pastors and on our churches. And it's going to radically change our churches, our cities, and our world. We are and we will experience the revival of all revivals before the night of all nights. I believe that God is going to take fresh tonight from the coals of the altars of heaven. And he's going to lay it on the mouth of every one of us. And there's going to be a burning, consuming zeal and passion. Burning our lips. Giving us and promoting us with passion to tell the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. We must move with it. We must move now with heaven in our mind and eternity in our step. Fulfilling that heavenly mandate and our earthly assignment of snatching souls out of hell and getting names written in the Lamb's book of life. My call to you and to our churches 
is let's populate heaven and depopulate hell. You great men and women of God, we can't forget why we're here. We can't forget who we are. We are the church that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I guess yesterday I felt it was the Holy Ghost prompting me to do this. But righteous indignation rose up in me. A little bit of anger hit me yesterday. And I realized this isn't just a biological attack on our physical bodies. This is a spiritual attack against the church of the living God trying to keep us from what God has called us to do in the last hour. He wants to shut us down. He had plans to shut everything down. But let me remind you, and nowhere would I try to compare this pandemic with the persecution that our early church went through or that many in suppressed nations are going through even this night. But let me remind you that when persecution hit the church, it, it spread them to Samaria and to Judea and the utmost parts of the world. And this pandemic, though it's not the persecution, and I, again, I don't want to compare it, but tonight it's going to take this church, and I tell you, it's going to bring the greatest revival that POA and your church has ever seen. God's promised it in the last days. So lift up your heads. These are the glorious days. These are the days that we've read about in both the Old and the New Testament. These are the days in which Joel spoke when he said, The Lord hath given the farmer rain moderately, but in the last days he's going to put together the farmer and the latter, and they're going to fall on you. This is the day that Joel spoke about in 2.24 that the floors of our churches shall be full of wheat. A vats are, are going to overflow with wine and oil. And here's what I love. He said, I will restore to you all that has been stripped away. And everything that that horrible, challenging year of 2020 gave us, where we went for weeks that we couldn't even be in our church building. God has told us what the canker worm has destroyed. I will restore to you what has been stripped away. Everything in this Bible, spoken by the mouths of all of his holy prophets concerning the church age, it's going to be fulfilled right before the rapture. Haggai, in his great prophecy, chapter 2 and 9, he said, The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts, and I would put please, peace in your place. The apostolic ministry that opened this church age is going to be the same apostolic ministry that closes this church age. Tonight, I am declaring under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, that we're going to have a rebirth of apostolic ministry and apostolic authority. To take authority over pandemics and spirits that would ever try to come against the church of the living God. The supernatural signs are going to follow us. I mentioned in camp meetings that I preached three or four years ago. That separation with Israel was not with their dress. But it was that cloud by day and that pillar of fire by night. And when Abraham sent his servant down to get gifts for Isaac, to find a wife for Isaac, Isaac knew it was his wife coming because he recognized the gifts that Abraham had sent. You let me tell you something. God's got his eye on this church. He's going to recognize the gifts that are operating in our midst. The gift of tongues and interpretation and prophecy. The gifts of laying on of hands. The apostolic works of the ministries. Those gifts are in our church. And if they've been lacking in our church, they're going to be restored. God has given us authority to drive out spirits. He's given us authority to lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. So I, I declare unto you 
apostolic authority. And I feel tonight like I felt when I read about Paul at Mars Hill, and you've heard me mention it before. He went to Mars Hill and sat down, they debated and discussed, and they philosophized, but not a church was built at Mars Hill. And Paul said, I've learned a lesson, that when he went to Corinth, he didn't go there debating, and he didn't go there trying to philosophize. He went there saying these words, I come not to you with enticing or persuasive words of man's wisdom, but I come in the demonstration and the power of the Holy Ghost. My preaching is going to be confirmed by heaven with signs following. I believe that our preaching and our teaching is going to be confirmed with signs following. Paul and Silas limped into a city. The authorities of the most powerful empire in the world said, these are they that have turned the world upside down. And I'm going to tell you, they didn't leave any buildings, they didn't leave any properties, and they didn't leave a lot of CDs or insurance policies for their family. But they left a church that was vibrant, that had reached all the way around the world, and is still changing our lives in 2021. That first century had one thing in common. They were destitute without the power and the operation of that Ark of the Covenant and the cloven tongues of the fire and the anointing resting upon them. What else could take fishermen and tax collectors that were despised by everyone and turn them to men and God that turned the world upside down? It could only be done by the power and the unction of the Holy Ghost. So it's going to take more than our churches. Yes, it's going to take more than us just going through our rituals. It's going to take apostolic anointing and apostolic authority. So tonight, I tell you, this is the greatest hour of the church. I had the privilege of being at what was known as the first march uh, on Washington. It was in the early 90s, and uh, all the televangelists were there, and they had put together a march on Washington, and I was so thrilled to be a part of it. And all of a sudden, all those speakers, if I were to name some of them, uh, you would recognize their names of years gone past. And those evangelists got up, and when they got through speaking, I was so depressed. They got up there and said, America is so full of crime. And they told us about hatred in America, and they told us about how many abortions and drugs and child abuse and how immorality was crashing America. And one by one, they spoke of everything that was wrong in America. And I was there as a preacher, and I was getting so depressed by having no hope in America at all. Until finally, an old preacher that my father knew from Washington, D.C., by the name of Bishop Smallwood Williams. And he walked to that pulpit, and with his shaking hands and shaking voice, he said these words, and I quote, Ladies and gentlemen, after hearing all that I've heard today, I've just got one thing to say. God is not in trouble. And tonight, this didn't catch God by surprise. This pandemic didn't catch God napping. We are experiencing the effects of that. But I declare his church is not going to heaven in wheelchairs. This church is not going to heaven on crutches. This church is not just going to limp and barely make it to heaven. I have had friends of mine and pastors and people at POA say, Pastor, I just don't know if church will ever be the same again. And you know what? I agreed with them. And I would agree with you if you think that church will never be the same again. I agree. Here's what I believe. I believe it's going to be greater than it's ever been. I don't believe it's going to be the same. I believe the church is going to see the greatest hour that the church of the living God has ever seen. My dad would preach, and I can see now, 
when he would get in that little old prison step of his, and Dad would always say to our church, he said, Anthony, POA, in the last days, God is going to put his church on parade. God is going to show his church off. You're my bride. Look at her. Daddy say, look at you. That's my bride. And God right now in 2021, in the middle of a pandemic, when fear seemed to be trying to take over faith, I have come tonight to tell you we're the bride of Christ. And the greatest hour that the church has ever seen is now. So let's roll. Lift up our heads together. Now is the time. Tomorrow will do, be too late. Whatever we're going to do, let's do it now. Whatsoever your hand findeth to do, do it with all your might. Let passion grip you tonight. Let a fresh fire of revival grip you tonight. Sitting in my chair, I told you, we called off BOTT and then we was going to do it virtually and we had to call that off. I just got plumb ticked off with righteous indignation. I said, God, if you'll give me the strength tomorrow afternoon, we're going the evening, we're going down swinging, and we're going to let them know we're going to have the revival of all revivals. POA, we're going to have the greatest revival that POA has ever seen. We're going to break through through the night of all nights when America's moving further and further away from becoming a Christian nation. God is going to show off its bride. It's happening now. It will continue to happen. For there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or to save by few. He is going to take the few on fire. He is going to take those in POA and those in your church. And he's going to take we pastors in just before that invisible hand shuts the door. That door that will be shut that no man can open. Let's have the revival in our lives and in every church and in every city and in every continent. I speak it to you. I speak revival to you through the authority and the power of the name of Jesus. God, thank you for anointing me today. Thank you for POA and these great men and women that tuned in. Thank you for these BOT brothers and sisters that have joined us tonight. I speak prophetically, Lord, into their lives with this prayer that you're going to bring revival in the next few days to our churches. You're going to open up our churches and those where churches are shut down. You're going to open up doors and provide a way where that we can gather together again as the body of Christ and have the revival of all revivals before the night of all nights. Be with us now. Keep your hand upon us. Let the apostolic authority work in us. Let us walk and move in your name with authority and power. It's in that powerful saving name of Jesus we proclaim. Amen and amen.